I've set up the video backup system again today and I'm going to look at the software side of things this time around. Previously I did a video more about the actual hardware and configuring things and setting all the, the video recording and everything up. What I am going to do quickly before I go into the software is just again go over how this is connected up just so that everything makes a little bit more sense hopefully. So in the corner here I've got just a standard VHS video recorder and in the back of that I've got a SCART socket and all this SCART socket is doing is going to this SCART lead and this is like a breakout lead and what that does is break out the composite video and the, the audio connectors. So you've got your input, your output for left and right audio. They're not used for the video backup system so we can ignore them. And then here we've got a composite output and a composite input connection that goes to and from the video. So at the back of the Amiga here you'll see we've got the VBS system itself plugged into the serial port and we're also using the mono composite output from the Amiga. This is what's used to get the video signal or to get the data from the Amiga into a video format to then record it to tape and that's basically how it will store the data. So that's going from the mono, mono composite output to the composite input on the video recorder. The VBS unit's got two leads going to it, or to and from it should I say. You'll see here this red lead, that's the composite output from the video recorder. That's then fed into the VBS unit and then this converts the composite signal into something the serial port can understand and then the VBS software actually converts that back into the data. The second lead here is basically a pass through. So the signal will go in to the VBS unit and then it comes back out and this then allows you to connect the composite output from the VHS recorder to uh, another screen or a monitor so that you can actually see what's going on on the videotape. Uh, it's also a good way to monitor the output from the Amiga because that basically is a loop back all the way through to hear what's coming out of the composite output on the Amiga which I'll show in a moment. And just as a side note here, I'm using an individual computer's Indivision ECS to get the video signal from the Amiga onto a standard VGA monitor. So this is nothing to do with the VBS system itself. So as you'll see, at the moment I've just decided to point the camera at the screen. This is going to be the simplest way for me to do this. And I'll explain the reason why. At the moment I've got the Amiga's video output selected on the screen and that's being fed into a VGA input, which is actually through a DVI port, confusingly. Uh, I've also got various other options on this screen, one of which is composite. And you'll see if I select that now, you get the standard sort of snow effect from an untuned uh, TV channel, which is basically the video recorder at the moment. So if I now go back to my VGA input, another feature of this screen is it has a picture-in-picture -picture mode. So if I press that, you'll see I've now got the main Amiga video in input on the screen and I've also now got the secondary input active just in the corner down here. This is really useful because it gives me the ability to monitor what's happening on the video and see the Amiga at the same time. And obviously that's a lot easier than trying to run two capture devices at once and messing around with all that. So that's the reason I'm, I'm pointing the camera at the screen. So as I was saying, this is basically acting as a pass-through and that's what we're monitoring here in this corner. Now I also mentioned that you can monitor the output of the Amiga. So if I now, on this video recorder, use a channel button to select the auxiliary input, that will now select the composite input on the back of the video recorder, which we're feeding with the Amiga's mono composite out. So as you'll see, we've now got two images of the Amiga screen on, on the monitor at the same time. This is obviously in black and white because this is a mono composite input. So I've got a few floppy disks I've found which uh, appear to be blank. And I'll show you here if I put that disk in. It tries to read it and we don't get anywhere. So that's a blank. And I'll put the video backup system disk in and boot off of that. Now the software can either be booted straight off the floppy disk as I'm doing now, which is really handy if you're trying to do a recovery of, say, a hard drive full system backup. Uh, obviously it's just handy anyway if you've not got a hard drive. 
uh, if you do have a hard drive you can actually install the software to the hard drive and then run the software off of there instead of keep booting off the floppy disk which is obviously much more convenient and as you'll see this is now loaded up and uh, we can go on to here there's a variety of different files and options but we'll just quickly go into the two most basic useful options as you'll see here you've got the VBS install and that's what installs the contents of the floppy disk to your hard drive you just give it a, a folder name where you want to store it and then it will copy it on and set up icons for you or you can just run the VBS from this main icon here and as you can see that's then loaded up it's a fairly simple user interface uh, this is version 1.2.1 I think I did say I thought I'd got a slightly newer version in the previous video, but clearly I was wrong if I did say that. And you'll see down this left hand side here we've got the list of the basic options, so floppy disk backup, floppy disk restore, which is obviously for backing up and restoring floppy disks, file system backup, file system restore, this is where you'd back up say an entire hard drive or perhaps just your work directory off of a hard drive, just whatever files you want, you can actually specifically select what you want to recover. Uh, sorry, or back up, or both really. Uh, file system verify, I don't think I've ever actually tried that. I assume that just does a restore without copying the files back to the hard drive. Uh, this system does implement CRC, error checking, and various other methods to verify the integrity of the data, which is obviously an important thing with any backup system. There's then these smaller buttons down here and these are to do with log files. This isn't something I actually used back in the day, I don't think. And I believe it's to do with keeping track of what backups are on which tapes and whereabouts on the tapes they are. Uh, it might be something to perhaps have a quick look at. But initially I just want to concentrate on the most simple features that most people are likely to use. So we'll start off with obviously the most simple feature which is to do a floppy backup. And you'll see now I've clicked that you get the option to pick which drives it uses for the backups and you can pick which drive you want to run the backups from of the available floppy drives obviously I've only got DF0 uh, installed on this system I've got no external drive set up at the moment if you had more you could pick those and then what the system would do once you set it off doing the backup is it would relay from one drive to the next and keep going until all the disks have been read you'll see here we've got this multiple disks option and that obviously allows you to back up a, a large number of disks and just keep feeding them in the machine without having to keep stopping and starting the backups and stopping and starting the tape. Once they've all been read it will then go back round to the, the first drive again and start backing up from that disk and it will just keep going. Now you can still run the system like that with just one disk and all you do once, once it's backed up that uh, disk is you flip the disk out and put the next one in and the software actually knows that the disk's been changed, it's quite clever and it will only start the backup of the next disk once you've taken the one it's just finished out of the drive and then put another one in. You'll have to bear in mind I haven't used this for a very long time and I've only had a quick flip through the manual so some things I may get slightly wrong here and also there are other versions of this software so it might operate differently under the other versions. So we've got DF0 selected, we're not on multiple disks, so I just hit OK. And we've got video connection check fail. Brilliant. So what this is, the video backup system does a loop back test from the mono composite output through the video recorder and back into the video backup system. Like I was showing earlier, we saw the workbench screen. Now the reason it does this is so that it can verify that you've got the video recorder set up correctly to record uh, the data onto the tape. So what that means I need to do is go back on the channel selector button on the video recorder as I did earlier and select the auxiliary input so that we're now on the composite input on the video recorder. What this now means is when the VBS system puts its test signal on the screen that signal will go into the video recorder, back out of the video recorder and into the video backup system unit and it can then pick up that signal and then it can verify that the video recorder is connected up correctly. So if I do that again, OK now, you'll see it's done its quick test and then it basically sits and waits for you to click the mouse button before it starts. This is to enable you to get time to get the video recorder set up with the tape and record or, or obviously you've probably already got the tape in so you just need to hit the record button at that time and you hit the mouse 
and then it will start. It always puts a splash screen on for every disc, as you just saw. If it's a DOS disc, it will show the name of the disc that it's been given uh, within Workbench. If it's a non-DOS disc, such as a, a game that might have its own file system, then it will just put NDOS on, on the title. And obviously you probably saw there there was a date stamp with, associated with the disc as well. Now at the minute this is just going through the motions. I haven't actually bothered to put the tape in yet and record this. But this is the signal that's being recorded. If I just turn that picture in picture off there. And that is basically a visual representation of the data that's been streamed off the disc. And the video recorder will just record this signal. So I'll click the mouse again because you can do that to cancel the operation. I think it's the right button. And then it will go back to the VBS system. And it says there's a break error because I aborted it. So let's get a, a tape loaded in. I've got a new tape here that hasn't been used, which I can't get out of the box one-handed. And we'll plug that in. And we'll go back into floppy backup again, click OK. The system's done its loop through check, which is obviously fine now because we're already doing what we need to do. Just put picture in picture back on. And I've pressed the left mouse button. As you can probably hear as well, it goes through the dish pretty quick. It's not slow at all. It's probably about as fast as a floppy drive can actually read. Now that's got to the end of the disc, so because I didn't select the multiple disc option, uh, VBS just returns back to the, the normal screen. If I'd have selected the multiple disc option, it would have then waited for me to swap the floppy disc, and as soon as the next disc's put in, it continues and reruns the whole backup process again for the next disc, and it'll keep doing that until you hit the mouse button. So what we can do now is stop our video recorder from recording, rewind, isn't the fastest on this thing. And then if I hit play, you'll see on the screen on the composite input area what's been recorded. So we've got that initial blank part at the beginning of the tape, then the splash screen with the details of the disc, and then obviously the data. And that's what's recorded on the uh, on the tape now. So obviously the next thing to try is to recover that data back from the tape onto the floppy disk. So if I stop and rewind that again, and then we'll just take the VBS floppy disk out and we'll put the blank new disk back in. And I'll go to floppy restore. Uh, now you can see here it asks for a backup name. Now the reason it does this is you can actually tell it which backup that you want to recover if you've got multiple backups on the tape which you're more than likely to have especially with floppy disks because one disk per tape would certainly be a bit wasteful and what it does when you do this is it will you can play back the backups that are on there and it will ignore all of the backups except the one with the name that you give it now ordinarily you're probably not going to use that mode so you can just click OK to specify uh, just recover whatever the next backup is that you come across on the tape and again, we get the same sort of style of requester here where we can pick multiple floppy disk uh, drives and you can do a recovery of multiple disks. So it's the same as the backup process, but in reverse, you can feed in uh, multiple floppy disks and it will just keep recovering each backup from the tape onto the next disk as you feed them in. But for this, we're just going to do single disk to DF0. And all you have to do once once you've selected this option on the menu, it's just press play and it will automatically start recovering once the next backup has been found. And again, you'll see down here, this is what's being played back from the tape. This is our Amiga screen in the background. And that's now recovering. You'll probably be able to hear the floppy drive clicking away in the background. It just blanks the screen on the actual Amiga when it's doing the recovery process. 
The only time it will come up with anything is if there's a problem or an error or if you actually stop it and abort it. Or as you'll see in a moment when it gets to the end of the recovery process. The, also the discs don't need to be blank when you recover to them, it just overwrites and it just does a full a full um, overwrite of the whole disc just as it does a full read of the whole disc. It doesn't doesn't care what file system's on there, it's just a raw track by track copy. And you'll see there it popped up with some information that's quickly disappeared off the screen. Which is a shame really because it would have been interesting to see that but we can pop back on that on the video and have a quick look at that. And that little bit of information that just popped up there, it said found VBS floppy VBS Amiga PAL, obviously because I'm using a PAL system, now recovering floppy. So it's just a quick bit of text to show what's going on really. Uh, no, you can actually save output log files of what's happened of the recovery process. Uh, definitely on the file system restore you can do that. So maybe there's a way to do that with a floppy system. When there is an error it will come back to that screen but it will stay on that screen so you'd obviously be able to see the rest of the log file then. Obviously if the recovery process has been successful then you probably don't really care what the log says. So obviously because this is recording just the mono output you can also see the VBS screen here from the previous recording session and that's just flicked out of there and this, this is just a blank tape, this was a brand new tape so there's not any particular signal on that tape now. So obviously in theory now this blank disc will be the Amiga video backup system so we'll reboot the Amiga if I press the right keys and see what happens. And as you can hear that's now booting. So that's well, that's answered one of the questions I did have in mind, which was whether or not on the restore it actually validates the recovered data that's on the floppy disk. I suspected it wouldn't because it wouldn't have the time to do that because it would have to read, write the data to the disk and then read it back, which there isn't enough time to do. And there's no other obvious way of, of doing that in real time. So that means not so much that there was a problem with the backup, because if there was a problem with the backup, the system would have picked that up with its CRC checksums. What that actually means is there's a problem with the floppy that I've re restored the backup to. Uh, so I'm going to have to do that again now. Just something that's noteworthy here. It does say in the manual to make a backup of the VBS disk. Uh, obviously it's a good idea to do that with any originals anyway. And obviously keep it right protected. Now this is a very good example of where you need to make sure you do that because it would be very easy when doing a restore to flick it out and put it back in again and then overwrite it with who knows what so yeah definitely worth getting a backup made so I'm just going to try again to recover this back up onto another floppy disk this disk doesn't sound particularly healthy to be honest yeah so I'm trying to boot off this floppy disk as well and this isn't sounding particularly good either So at this point in time it does seem that the VHS tapes are more reliable than the floppy disks. Yeah I'm just going to give up on that one I think, that's definitely not happy. So this is looking a lot more promising. Again though it's, it's, uh, it is an issue really, there's no way to verify the integrity of the restore. They obviously can verify the integrity of the backup by doing a restore uh, from the floppy disk. But verifying the actual restore onto a floppy disk itself, there's no obvious way to do that. And again there's no option on here either, there's no way to verify the floppy because it, I, I would imagine the system would need to keep an image of the backup in RAM, the floppy disk backup in RAM and then reread the floppy disk and compare it to what's been stored in RAM. That, that would be the, the logical way I could think to do it. Um, but then you would only be able to recover one floppy disk at, any, at a time because you'd obviously have to allow time for the disk to be verified before you moved on to the next one. So that would mean either stopping and starting the tape or having these big gaps when they're recorded. It'd be interesting to see if the newer versions of the software actually have features like this for verifying the floppy disks uh, and other sort of verification 
options available. But as you can see, that has worked. Third time lucky with the floppy disks, but the actual video backup system itself has reliably worked, backing up and restoring a floppy disk. Now I'm gonna call it a day with this for the time being, because this has gone on for quite a while. As usual, these things seem to take longer than expected. But I'll put another part up to this little series another day, and then I'll go into the details of the file system backup and restore, and hopefully also I'll do the full A590 uh, backup recovery as if it was a disaster recovery scenario, say a crashed hard drive or whatever, and I'll just go through that process and get the system back up and running with my old backup from nearly 25 years ago. But that's it for now.